we're back with Signature Chefs of Orlando. Again, I'm Keith Esbin, the corporate chef of Bar Harbor Seafood and Boston Lobster Feast restaurants. We're uh, on part two of our segment on brunch or breakfasts. And what we're going to continue with is we're going to make a lobster crepe uh, served alongside a nice arugula salad with a white balsamic vinaigrette. So let's start this right away by making a vinaigrette. Nice little small bowl. I have my white balsamic vinegar. I've got just a little bit of garlic. I don't need all of this, so be sparing. A little bit of shallot. One of the main ingredients you usually need to have whenever you're making a vinaigrette. You need to have, yeah, obviously, salt and pepper to season, but sugar also offsets the tartness of your vinegar and brings down the salt flavor. So we've got some sugar, just a little bit of salt, and some pepper. I want to hit it, just a dash of fresh squeezed lime ju lemon juice just to uh, impart some citrus flavors. So with that, I'm going to whisk that up. And I'm going to slowly incorporate extra virgin olive oil. What I actually want to do is put this on a towel so my bowl doesn't spin as badly. Just give me one second on that. Towel down. Now you don't want it too greasy, so obviously you want to taste it about halfway through. That's dead on. You could always adjust your seasonings, let add a little salt and pepper. So I'm going to put that off to the side. We'll use that when we're ready. Okay. Now, what we want to do, obviously, is make a crepe for the lobster, but this is a savory crepe. We're not just doing, like, uh, ban bananas or apples or anything like that. We're going to be, obviously, we're using lobster, so we want to impart some savory flavors into our batter mix. Uh, just a quick thing on making a batter. The easiest way to do it is to do it in a blender. Uh, the recipe is simple. One cup of flour three quarters of a cup of milk, half a cup of water, three tablespoons of melted butter, and just a pinch of salt. If you mix that up in the blender on high and then put it in your cooler for about 20 minutes, all the bubbles will then come out of it. And you get a nice, just a really easy to work with uh, crepe batter. Now, as I said, we're going to impart some savory flavors. So I have my lemon juice, and I have the shallots. And I want some salt. I'm gonna mix that up. I wanna impart that flavor in there, let the flavors of the shallots come out into the lemon juice. And I've also got some freshly chopped tarragon. Now tarragon is an herb that is very pungent, it's very overpowering, so don't use too much of it but it really has just a really fresh, outstanding, one-of-a-kind flavor. So I'm gonna put that in my batter here. And I'm also going to put this in as well. And I'm going to mix it up. Once it's incorporated all throughout, when you heat this up in the pan and the, the, it's starting to form just similarly to a pancake, you're gonna smell the aroma of the uh, tarragon as well as the uh, shallot. So I'm gonna put the heat on low. You don't need it that high, otherwise it'll burn. You just wanna make an even dispersed heat over the frying pan. Now you could use a nice, brand new 
uh, silicon coated uh, frying pan or you could buy a crepe pan which is designed specifically for this use. For our purpose today we'll just use a Teflon coated pan. Just a quick shot of some no stick spray and just a tiny bit of butter. The butter really is just to uh, impart a no stick area. If there's too much butter when you put this in it's going to spread out and the uh, crepe is going to fall apart. I'm actually going to wipe some of this out because we do not need this much oil for a crepe. I'm just going to just like that. Got a ladle here. Right around the outside and then just a little more on the inside. Maybe just a little more. And then all you have to do is turn the pan. I'm trying to show it to you. Just wave it around so it coats. It's not as round as I'd like it to be, so we'll make it round. It's already starting to form. Sometimes it's easy to take a little bit of spray and put it on the tip of your pan so you could get underneath. See how it's coming underneath and just As you can see, it's starting to dry up. The smell's coming out, and the tarragon is just really nice. Try to move the pan around if you're using a small stove. Obviously, if you're using one with the surface where the uh, heat is evenly dispersed, you'll have a much better uh, evenly cooking. So I have to move the pan around. Sometimes an electric griddle actually works great also. So just do this for just another second or two. I'm gonna grab this. Oops. You can flip these, but I just want to do it the easy way. So about another 10 seconds on the other side, and it'll be ready. And I'm going to take it off to the side. Now what I want to do is I want to cook my lobster. Now I'm going to put on a higher a little bit. Now it's up to you how you want to do it. Uh, I personally like to sh shave my lobster because when it's too thick and you saute it, it becomes rubbery, it gets caught in your teeth, and to me that's not uh, attractive or enjoyable. So, and actually when it's shaved like that, you impart a lot more flavor of the lobster when you're sauteing. So, some butter. We've got our lobster meat. We've got basically the, all the lobster meat I would find in two uh, one pound lobsters, tail and both knuckles and claws. I'm going to add a little bit of garlic. And of course salt and pepper. Right away the smell of the butter and the lobster is just exploding. Just want to warm it up to kind of refresh that those flavors. You don't have to brown it. You just have to make sure that it's nicely coated with the butter. And we 
we'll turn that off. And I'm gonna put this off to the side. We're done with our stove. Okay, now back to our salad. I wanna finish our salad. We have some fresh arugula. I have some asparagus that has been blanched and I've shaved it or cut it at an angle on the bias. And some red onion julienne. Always season your greens. A little bit of salt, my pepper, a little bit of salt. And again, we have our vinaigrette. Now you're not gonna obviously put all of that in there. Just enough to barely coat your greens. And we'll just, like about two tablespoons. If you put too much, it becomes soupy or the greens wilt. You just want to impart flavor of the vinaigrette. It doesn't take a lot to make that go a long way. So we have this nice, fresh, healthy salad. And now we're ready to assemble our dish. I have our crepe. I'm gonna put some lobster in there. I have another crepe over here, sorry. I will put some more, go for broke. We'll roll it up. Could be just a purse. We're gonna put right in the middle our salad. Make sure you see some of our vinaigrette and our asparagus and our red onion to bring out some of that color. Now going back to what we did for the uh, last episode, it's creme fraiche. It's a beautiful accompaniment for lobster and crepes. I'm gonna throw that nice right along there. Hit it again with some caviar. And that, we will call it a completed dish. Hope you all try this, because I'm about to go back and eat some of this myself. Thank you.